So I'm a clinician and an ENT surgeon and I work in, a, in an hospital in Paris, a general hospital, where I am head of a tinnitus clinic, tinnitus hyperacusis clinic. So I'm mainly a, a clinician, but I'm also interested in research. My main interest in research is uh, devoted to clinical work, meaning that I mainly do clinical research and my main domain of interest right now are uh, the use of virtual reality as a treatment for uh, tinnitus patients. Um, it's something quite new, we've published uh, one or two papers uh, on the topic and it seems to be something that could be useful at least for some patients. The main idea be behind the use of virtual reality for tinnitus patients is uh, the fact that tinnitus is considered some kind of uh, missing information for the brain and uh, virtual reality techniques have been already used for pain patients, for patients who have uh, amputation and suffer amputated limb uh, chronic pain. And on the, same, on the same idea, we've tried to create virtual uh, environments where the patient has the uh, patients have the ability to interact with a sound that looks like, that sounds like their tinnitus. So we had to recreate a sound, then to insert that sound in virtual uh, environments, visual and auditory three-dimensional environments. And uh, by doing this, we gave the patient the ability to interact with the tinnitus. And this seems to be useful as it is useful for an amputated patient to have the, the impression, the feeling that is gained the ability to redo something with uh, his amputated lip, even if it's in the virtual world. I've seen only the first day of uh, that conference here in Taiwan, and uh, I've been quite interested by uh, epidemiology of tinnitus. There was an interesting communication from the ESET school, the, the, the European ESET school, a school uh, of uh, PhD students, and one of the students had a very interesting uh, research topic, and uh, they've studied the epidemiology of tinnitus in, uh, in uh, European countries, and it seems that the prevalence of tinnitus is about 15%, and these figures were we thought it was something like that, but we have now the proof that the tinnitus is a widespread, uh, a widespread condition, a widespread symptom. And this is very interesting because as it is so frequent, so, so, so largely, uh, felt by many patients, many, many people, then it would be easier to have funding for research and, um, trying to help those patients to, in the best way. I would say that funding uh, is the critical issue because without money, nothing can be done. And uh, at least in the European countries nowadays, uh, we've found out different ways to, to have money, to, to, to raise funding for this very interesting topic. Uh, because pro probably because it's something that uh, is a very, very interesting way to understand how our, our brain perceive things in the auditory domain and what can be wrong in the way the brain and the auditory system perceives the, the sounds around us. And this is, uh, this is an interesting topic at uh, the scientific level. And I think this is why tinnitus is, as the tinnitus field is, is, is improving quite a lot lately. Collaboration between different disciplines is something which is, uh, which is very, very, very important because nobody has the absolute answer to give to those patients. Tinnitus is, is a very heterogeneous condition. No two different patients have obviously two different tinnitus subtypes. And because there, there are some psychological issues, then a psychiatrist, a psychologist is, is, uh, is important because some other patients have hearing disabilities, then audiologists, hearing aid retailers have their very, are very important too, because many patients have ENT problems, uh, ear infection, uh, tumors or whatever. Uh, the expertise of an ENT is also very important for those patients. So <clears throat> as no one has the ability to overcome all the issues, then the collaboration is critical and very, very important. And I also, I also think that patients have their importance because they, they need to tell us 
what they want exactly. Uh, we know that a cure, uh, a way of making the tinnitus disappear forever, would be some kind of uh, miracle, uh, a gold standard. But as soon as it, as it is not possible today, then the, in, in, the interaction with the patients is also very important. And this is why I'm also part of the scientific board of the French Tinnitus Association, France Acouphenia.